in this video, I'm going on an adventure. And I'm taking all of you with me. So it's 5.30 in the morning. I have to be really quiet. But the backstory is I've been building out data center dudes. Data center, right? Well, I needed some extra stuff. So I went looking for some servers and I happened upon some auctions and public surplus for three NetApp racks full of disk shelves and older controllers. I didn't win the big one that I wanted, but I did win a second one for $45. Problem is, it's in San Luis Obispo, seven hours away from Las Vegas. They won't ship it. They don't allow trucking, or they won't arrange trucking. So I literally have to go pick it up. This is gonna be a fun adventure. Come on. All right guys, so we're about an hour into the trip. I've got a few hours in the car, so I figured I would take some time to make some content and explain to you guys what was going on. So. Uh, a few weeks ago, I started the search coming into 2023 for some servers for Data Center Dudes Data Center so that we could continue the mission, so that we could build out a VM environment, stand up some physical you know, presences, some workloads, some apps, all that stuff, show the transition from one work, work stack to another, all that good stuff. But I need some x86 platforms to be able to, to do that. So I was looking, running around looking for some 1U, 2U, HP, or Dell servers to put in the racks for data center dudes data center. What I happened across, or what you tend to find, aside from eBay obviously, is some of these gray market auction sites that are helping educational places, municipalities, things like that, offload their gear after refreshes and stuff like that. So there's one that's uh, legit, publicsurplus.com. They help a lot of municipalities around the country here in the US. Uh, offload their gear. You can find some stuff really cheap. Um, so I came across this site and at the very top, I saw three NetApp racks. Very kind of ambiguous listings. So okay, so let's go check these out. And, and I saw that they were listed for like $25. Okay, that sounds suspicious. That's very sus, but let's go check it out anyway. So the first rack I pull up, I go, oh, it's just a cabinet because it was very tricky how to navigate, very 2003 GeoCities, how to navigate through the pictures. But once I figured that out and started flipping through, I realized that, oh, this is a rack, this is a 42U NetApp branded cabinet full of a pair of 3140s from the late 2000s and nine, quantity of nine, 4243 disc shelves for $45, whatever the price was. I said, okay. So obviously they don't have discs in them um, at that price, but even if they did, who knows? So I bid on it and I was immediately outbid. I was like, okay, so there's a proxy bidding system somewhere to eBay. So I bumped mine up and I, with it, with an hour to go, uh, me and someone else were going back and forth. Ultimately, I set my proxy bid to $500 and was outbid within the last 10 minutes. So I was like, okay, you know what, that's fine. I don't need nine DS4243 shells. What am I gonna do with that? Besides have to go through a lot of work to flip them. However, there were two other NetApp rack auctions, same kind of ambiguous listing, just with a few pictures. The third one of the set was another NetApp cabinet, branded cabinet, with the OEM power strips, uh, PDUs, uh, and it had two of the 4243s in it. However, it had several other things that I really, really wanted uh, and can really make use of immediately. Um, so first of all, gonna get those two shelves, which I'm excited about, so either we can use them, and, and I think there's a way that I can hook them up to the gear that I have currently. However, it also had the side panels for that cabinet. And it just so happens to be, if you guys are familiar with what I have, um, there's the one lighted cabinet that has the blue N on the front of it, right? The other one doesn't have side panels. This is the exact same cabinet. So now I'm now gonna get side panels. And while it does have the two shelves in it, it has OEM NetApp blanks everywhere else throughout the cabinet. So I'm gonna get a full set, full rack full of blanks 
and the side panels on top of the two uh, 4243 shelves, uh, four PDUs, and however much other stuff is in there. It's gonna be, I have no idea what to expect other than that, honestly. There, there may be more there with it, but I won that auction. I won that auction for $45. <laughs> So I'm driving from Las Vegas to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo on the coast of California. <laughs> fun little adventure, fun little side trip, and we'll see where it goes. And, and we're gonna film the whole thing and make content for you. I'm taking an extra step and making it fun. I'm swinging through Los Angeles and picking up my best friend, uh, some of you may know as Brit Chris, uh, who's gonna be an extra pair of hands and a cameraman for me today. So. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, we're just now getting on the outskirts of Vegas, so here we go. We'll see you on the flip side. Yeah, there he is. Right, so where are we going today? Why are, why are you here? I've been hijacked and kidnapped to go to San Luis Obispo. What the hell is in a San Luis Obispo? Um, Lompoc Prison, I believe, which is a federal <laughs> penitentiary for like really hardened criminals. We're gonna go see Vin Diesel, right? Well, I hear, I hear the, the tuna casserole is really good there, so yeah, we're nice. gonna pop in for lunch. Um, <laughs> then we're gonna swing by Cal Poly, um, which is a, a rather nerdy mm -hmm. um, college campus, I understand, all engineering and everything, which is cool, which means hopefully people will be able to understand English. Maybe. Yes, yes. Yeah, they yeah. were. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, not not gonna, the Queen's English. But. Right. And we're going to pick up a whole bunch of fucking ex NSA cyber hacker where. Is that what you think? So, what is it you think we're picking up if you had to describe it? Uh, computer stuff, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I, I have no idea. Like, I doubt it's going to be keyboards. I doubt it's going to be monitors. Maybe a monitor or two, whatever. But I'm assuming it's going to be basically the, the HAL 9000 innards yeah. and guts. Yes. And we're going to throw it all in the back. And as we're driving back, we're going to hear, I can't let you do that, Nick. <laughs> Something like that. As it gets darker, we're going to notice that the, the, the interior cabin is all red from that eye that's watching us. What are you doing, Dave? What are you doing, Chris? And it's going to gas me through here. Well, no, you're going to gas me. That's where the gassing's going to come from. Hey now, hey now. So, uh, yeah, so we're 150 miles from here okay. to there. Three, uh, about three hours. It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. Southern California day, um, and it's February. So back in Yorkshire, where I'm from, it would not be anything like this. Nope. Palm trees and sunshine, Southern California not, style. Not in Yorkshire. No. Uh, it would be very gray and, uh, and wet and cold and miserable. So. Well, let's hit the road. I hope you don't mind spending six hours in the car with me. Really? This is what I have to... Okay, fine. Just drive the car. Let's go. Six hours later. We got them. We got them, guys. So, beautiful Pismo Beach on the coast of California. You can see the water right there. It's beautiful. Anyway, filling up with gas. Headed back. Three hours to LA, four hours to Vegas. Let's do it. All right, gang. Checking in one last time before we get home. We're in the final hour, the final stretch. It is currently 10.40 p.m. We left the house at 6 a.m. today. And looking at the trip odometer, we have gone 847 miles. Still got about 70 to go to get home, but long day. Let's finish it up. Come on. All right, guys, time check. It is 11.40 p.m. I'm pulling into my neighborhood. 919 miles. We left at 6 a.m. this morning. 6 p.m. would be 12 hours. Five more is 11. No, 12 hours. Oh, God, I can't do math. It's so late. 12 plus 5. Seven, is that right? 17 hours? 6 a.m. basically to midnight basically <laughs> 18 hour day in the car and I completely stripped a 42U rack in the middle of it
right guys, it is the next day and I have been excited to show you guys everything that has been going on over the last 24 hours. But you guys have been on the adventure with me. We're back, it's the next day. Let's talk about what we got. So the main reason that I went was because I needed some more shelves that were not flash. I needed something that could hold some three and a half inch hard drives in mass because I got a lot of those laying around. So these are the DS4243 shelves. They are about 10 years old, but they are in immaculate condition. Uh, they were up at Cal Poly Tech in San Luis Obispo. I found it at a public surplus auction and it, they were all in a cabinet and everything. I think I told you guys the story already, but here's what we got, two shelves, no drives, just all the caddies. We also got, when I got there, it was a fully populated rack. So we've got four PDUs, actual NetApp PDUs from there. I even took the leveling feet off the bottom of the cabinet. So all the grounding wires, the which, which you can't see is I already took one of the side panels that was on it upstairs. So basically we're filling things out. Uh, we're gonna hook this up to what you guys have known was an A200 has been swapped out, right? Sent that one back and got a proper FAS back because we've got the FAS 500F already, which was I thought was the A250. So we've got an all flash array already. Now we're gonna have a FAS to sit alongside of it and we're gonna do a ton of fun projects such as mirroring data between the all flash and some of these capacity systems. So thanks for coming on the adventure with me. Um, I can't wait to get these guys in the rack and uh, I'm gonna show it all to you. So until next time, take care.